risk of more than five seconds, you have to get the capital prize. Yes, and if you stay on more than more than two seconds, you'll get captured money. Good so? Don't seem to be worried. Hey, Neil, you want the loan of my rope to tie yourself in the saddle? Nope. You'll need it to tie yourself up with when I win this first prize. All right, let's go. <laughs> you, Mr. Gibson, on knowing a real writer when you see one. He can ride, but he's too fresh. He always was, you know it? No. I never laid eyes on Neil Craig before in my life. Gee, honey, don't these things make you kind of jittery? Wait! <laughs> honey, my cold. Well, there she is. Hi, Fifth Halbert. Neil, you were wonderful. Boy, that's some saddle. I'll bet you could get 5000 in Chinese money on it. Ah, uh -huh, no, it's not for sale in any language. What did Dad say? He didn't. He strangled. I saw him try to eat his program. Yeah, that's when he discovered that Neil Craig was his one and only. Prodigal son. I've heard of the prodigal bringing home the bacon, but never a saddle like that. Maybe Dad will roast a fatty calf for you. Uh, well, if it's just the same, I'll take ham and eggs. And I'll take a little snow. Now, oh, now, wait a minute, minute Bert. So you thought it was a cute trick, eh? Not cute. Funny. <laughs> you had to see him for five years. You had to... Yeah, see... I'll give him credit for one thing. He's changed his name. He always had a sense of humor. Well, all right. I we won't go into that. Huh? No, no, you always sided with him. Anything that he did was all right with you. He's always done the things I wanted to do. Yeah, but he's going to do the things that I want him to do. Won't work. You try that, but you fail. He's just as stubborn as you are. You know, there's one thing that you and he have in common. You say what you think. You're all right. I like him. I like him. I'm crazy about him. I can't tell you. Isn't that ridiculous? No. He's crazy about you, but he can't tell you about it. Well, why can't we get along? Because you're too much alike. He's an hour late. Now, why can't he try to please me? Maybe he would if you do to him what you just did to me. Tell him that he's all right. I'd like to. But I can't. Hello, Dad. Oh, hello, young lady. Hi, Mr. Williams. Hello, Gwen. Why don't you open the windows in here? This place is like a museum. Everything in it is stuffy. Uh, you tell that son of mine, if he comes in here sometime today, that I'm out. Very well, Mr. Gibson. <laughs> I'm not interested in people that don't keep their appointments. Now, don't start throwing things when he comes in. Your son is after hog tire. <laughs> Why don't you try being nice to him and him? I would, if he'd get off that horse of his long enough to settle down to something worthwhile. Well, you still want him on a saddle, your saddle, the desk. Carry on for the glory of Gibson and Stark, commission merchant. Trying to make a monkey out of me yesterday. Wait till he comes in here. Now hold your temper. No, I'll try. Will you promise me something? Yes, I'll promise. Why? Will you let Neil say? Hold your temper and be quiet. 
I'll promise. I wish he had your good sense. I haven't any either, but you're not on to me. Now, remember what you promised. Let me up speak first and hold your temper. Shake. again this morning. Turn him down again? Yes. He was too full of devotion and liquor. Ah, you two make me tired. He can take his choice. Me or Scotch. Well, what do you want me to do? Two things, will you? Sure. First, sign for it and see when you stop drinking. This might go on for days. A drink he starts looking for Max Bear. What's wrong with that? Oh, do it, I ask. Will you, Mia? Okay. Promise. Now for the second place. Hold your temper and let Dad speak first. It'll be tough. I'll do it. your horse, stuck in the elevator. Were you ever on time in your life? Yep, yesterday on top of that front. Well, at your age, I stuck on him twice that long. Did you ever win a prize? Don't argue with me. What should I do? You listen to me. Shoot. Instead of riding Francis to show off, how about making a job of it? It's a job now. Go out on one of my ranches. Manage it for me. You mean take orders from you? Why not? That's how. I don't want a job that has any responsibility. You never did. That's what's wrong with you. Maybe so. You're too lazy. You've no consideration for anybody but yourself. Now listen. Now I've heard all wrong. You're my one bad investment. I spent money on you, and you turned out to be just so good. That's telling me where I stand just a little bit wrong. We'll let it go for now. But someday you're going to apologize for that no good crack. Not me. Oh, yes, you will. I guess that's all. You bet it is. Good day, sir. And watch my smoke. Now, you, you take this pickle. Same idea, Major. As long as start selling this life the same as you and I. Yeah, and peppy. Shut up, man. Oh, boy, boy. Yeah, as it starts to grow, it starts to develop water. Who likes water? You can't do anything about it. It has nothing to say. It has one chance, one hope, and that is to become a cucumber. Come 
out, boys. Can't have the cops here again this week. I think I'm going to 
don't like it out here. Come on. Hey, Duke. Uh, Duke, give me a towel, will you? Hurry up, Duke. Give me a towel, quick. Hey, I'm right. Right. Ah. Uh. Oh, boy. Feel better now. You look better. Oh, get over there. Get over there. Clear. Uh, lay off of that. Who's doing this? Uh, you can get your time. What do you mean? You heard me. You're through. Want a job? Yeah. You got it. Good enough. I think I'll send you some clothes. Not I could use them. You could wash your face, too. Coming along. How are things going? You'll be all right. Somebody's been lying to me. How do you mean? Oh, I, I know it's like you to keep trouble from me, but I know you're having tough going. With the men complaining and leaving and lying down on the job. Who's been telling you that? I know men. No pay, no work. Well... Some of the men resent being brought to girl, but they're going to learn to like it. Who are the two strangers? I think they're a vaudeville team. They fell off a freight in dinner clothes. Well, who'd they say they were? Sir Walter Raleigh and the Duke of Wellington. Well, maybe they are, at that. I hired Sir Walter. Can he ride? Great. I don't know about horses. Well, how about the Duke? I'll put him mending fences. He'll get his dress shirt kind of dirty. <laughs> the Doc Wells says I'll be at least another month like this. Great help I am. Now, don't worry. I won't if that bank comes across with a loan. If it doesn't, we're through. Things will work out. I hope you're right. I hope I am, too. Kind of nice. He sure was. I mean the place around. Oh! I don't slip in for any day. Yeah, especially when you don't get no wages. I'm moving to the next stop, and I hear Stark is paying more dough. I'm sticking here. Old man where he treated me all right. Ah, he's broke. Gibson and Stark are the big shots around here. Gibson and Stark? Run on the next way. Say, what's the name of this town? Marlow. Wait a minute. Sure. Dad's got two places in this country. Now I remember. The next town is Glenover. They own a ranch there, too, and Stark and partners run on it. Meaning what? Don't you remember? Dad said I was no good. Bad investment. Another trance. No, no, a job. Tomorrow morning... You and I start throwing a monkey wrench in a farm called Gibson and Stark. You know his partner, Stark? Never saw him. He don't know me. Even up. I'll get a monkey wrench. You start throwing it, and don't miss. Trying to start something again, eh? Yeah. What? Uh-oh. Here comes the big sheep, ma'am. Did you ever punch cattle? Chicago stockyard. I believe it. I suppose you did yours on a merry-go-round. No, I don't like wild horses. From now on, you wash dishes. Can I wear my spurs? Maybe you think he can't wash dishes. Show him your diploma. Don't try to kid me. I'm... This boy is the champion dishwasher of the Middle West. And don't forget my Eastern record, too. That's right. 
He holds the championship dishwashing belt. Go on, tell him who I am. Dorgan, you're looking at that soap stud kid. Have you got a diploma? Why? You giving some away? I'm giving you a chance to get one. From now on, you wait on table. From now on, you get the soup down the back of your neck and hot. Come on, soap stud. Hello. You know, I can't understand you, Soap Stud. Why, I remember when you used to balance two plates on your chin while you kept three in the air at the same time. <laughs> that was when I was young and ambitious. Hey, come on, that soup. Hey, don't get soup. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, take it to soap. Yeah, get in there. The wolves are howling. Yeah, hey, what's the delay out there? How about the last one? Here, you haven't got me yet. Hey! Every single break you got to pay for! Well, I can have a lot of fun around here for a dollar and a half. You know, Pastor Vizul, I must be slowing up. I used to be able to juggle three cups and keep ten plates in the air at the same time. Wait till I show you this place. I don't know what you called me, but if it's what I think it is, you're asking for a punch in the nose. That's exactly what I said. Are you casting reflection on my character? Two times, that's what I said. Them riding fools. Well, that may be your way of branding, but it isn't the way we do it in the Argentine. Just how do you do it down there, soap suds? We fight our initials into them. That calls for good teeth. Yeah, that'll let you out. I got as good teeth in the outfit. Let's see him, and I'll tell you your age. Get it, horsey? <laughs> Listen, Eustace, if you were a man's size, I'd cut you into a beak and stick you into the ground. Now, don't worry about my size. Just start cuffing. I'm saving that up for a friend of yours. And when I start cuffing him, he'll crawl off in this place on his hands and knees. Oh, yeah? I just love to be cuffed. Especially by someone who really can cuff. Why, you... Oh... So you're just a great big naughty boy. Say <laughs> <laughs> you're just a great big naughty boy. <laughs> I'll get you for this. Yeah, you just cuff him to a peak, don't you? Well, we 
we have a new foreman. Mm -hmm. yeah. What? Who? Sir Walter Raleigh. How come? Jorgen Thorne. Jorgen? I never thought he'd walk out. He didn't. The men laughed him out. I figured Jorgen would always hold a whip hand. So Walter took his whip away from him. But we don't know anything about this new man. Do? So do the men. They like him. Do you think they'll work for him? Yes. He has a way with him. But is he a cattleman? He didn't ask him. Just made him foreman. Well, maybe it's all right. But I'd like to see him. I'll send him in. Uh, what uh, letter was that? Huh? What letter? The one you did. Oh, that. Yes, that. Can't see my way out. Let's see this, Sir Walter. I'll get him. Sir Walter, this is my father. Ah, oh, glad to know you, sir. And here it says you're all right. I said I thought he'd be all right. Why, well, Anne, I thought you. I'll said... leave you with Mr. Wally and. Uh... What is your name? Oh, I guess Raleigh's as good as any. I think so. What do you say, Ann? He's your foreman. And you've stepped into a tough spot. The bank refuses to renew my note. And I owe wages. And unless we can deliver our cattle in Kansas City on the 1st, I'm through. Now, what do you say? We'll deliver them. How? Oh. Give me a free hand. You back me up. We'll make the grade. I wish I had your confidence. Look, place a bet on me. I'm a long shot. When they win, they're good. I'll say you care across the board. Now then, what should I know? It's Gibson and Stark. They want this place. And it's corralled everything else around here. They control the bank. What kind of a number is this, Stark? Blick. The kind of a person who always smiles. Well, he cuts your throat. I know. He's kind of curious his fingernails, too. How about this partner of his, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Gibson? He's a wall-eyed, wheel-legged, milk-fed pirate. His father must have been a burglar and his family a pack of wolves. I'd like to meet this old pirate. He won't. He never comes out here. No, he hides in his den. He rolls the balls and Stark throws them. No one has ever tried throwing them back. How's your arm? I haven't had any complaints. Then start throwing. I could be there for you now with one leg, but my money's on you. You'll collect on the first. Good night, sir. Good night. This is right, Anne. I like him, don't you? Oh, he's all right, I guess. What do you mean, you guess? Well, well, he's, well, he's altogether too sure of himself. Well, that's what I like about him. I don't. He'll do this and he'll do that. Why, you think he was running the place. Well, isn't that why you hired him? Yes. Then why in the... He won't give me any orders. Has he tried to? No. But I feel that he's going to. What an addition to holdings we need out here. Best wishes, Thomas Stark. Gibson and Stark. Yes, sir. All right, read it. To John Brower, President of Traders Bank, Denver, Colorado. My dear John, I also recommend your judgment in not renewing the Adam Ware note. If you agree, we will foreclose on you. It will make an important addition to holdings we need out here. Best wishes, Thomas Stark, Gibson and Stark. It's nice to have you tell me that my name is Stark. It's also interesting to learn that the firm name is Gibson and Stark. You requested that I read it, sir. The letter, yes. You don't have to read me my family history. I'm sorry, sir. I suppose they taught you that in college, too. No, sir. I guess I could find out something they did teach you. 
That is something useful and practical. I was a talented a good student. Yeah, they overlook the fact that you're just naturally dumb. I resent that, Mr. Stark. My, my. I won't sleep tonight. Why do you keep me here if you dislike me so? You hand me the last. Those agricultural colleges are the balloon. If he ain't, answer me this. Why is it a red cow eating green grass gives white milk? I don't know. No, and neither do any of your professors. There's one for your book. You and your diploma. <laughs> <laughs> Got those book balanced up to date? Yes, sir. Hello, Dorgan. How's everything, boss? Fine with me. Know where I can get a good man in your place? Now, listen. What good are you anyway, except to draw your pay every month? I was all right until that dude got in my hair. He got in deeper than your hair. He made a monk of you, ran you off the place. Where'd you get your information? I've had you covered from the start. I didn't touch. No, you've been doing a lot of talking. Suppose I start doing some. Who are you talk to? Your partner, old Gibson. What are you hanging around here for? Get out of here and keep your ears out of the mud. What did you mean by that remark about talking to Gibson? You said I was crooked, didn't you? I said I didn't trust him. Old Gibson does trust you. Then what? You've been crossing him and I know it. You know what? You've been buying up a lot of acreage out here. Both be for the firm. If you think so, start running me out of here. I got it on you. I got plenty. You start anything with me, and I start yelling. And suppose I go along with you. You get the wear ranch. I get me that dude, Raleigh, and I don't start yelling. How do we operate? If wear can't deliver in Kansas City by the first, he's through, isn't he? Yes. If there's no cattle left for the first, what does he deliver? He don't. That's my idea. Do I stay? If you can do that. I can. You're on. And get this. Nobody's fooling anyone. I don't trust you any more than you do me. That's fine. Now we start eating. Langdon, you and your men ride to the forks and see if any of the wire men are around. We'll run off their cattle. Meet us at Tontin Basin and we'll change brands there. I got it. Go over that north slope and see if you can locate those stairs. Okay, I'm on my way. What'd you say that last count was, George? I'd say it's around 700 head, miss. Some sticks. What? Some sticks. You know. 
know, a couple of pieces of wood to make some splits with. Now, you just hold it right there, little fellow. We'll have you all fixed up here in a minute. Pour me some water. Now, let me look at it again. Brown hair. do the work, she kisses you. They don't like grouse. They'll come around to it. Pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? I know dogs. I could say something, but I won't. I could, too, and I will. After this, don't interfere in my business. Here, hold the puppy, will you? When did I interfere in your business? Yesterday. I told Andrews and Foster to ride fence. You countermanded my orders. I didn't think it was necessary. Then we check up those lost cattle of your house, not mine. Here, hold it. I was wrong. You were. Don't let it happen again. May I carry you into the house? Yeah, I guess it'll be all right. Is this your shirt? Well, I wouldn't be tearing up anybody else. I suppose the laundry sent you the wrong one. No, that's mine. Is that safe? Yeah, that's all. Thank you, Miss. I came over to see you about. Funny if ours were mixed up, wouldn't it? What do you mean? Well, if someone ran off our stock and rebranded it, it'd be kind of hard to prove. Well, whoever did get away with it, with me. Nor me. Where are my cattle, Stark? You wouldn't suggest that I know something about that stolen stock, No. Oh, no. No more than you did about my note at the bank when you arranged with them not to renew it. You're a friend, Stark. You and Gibson just tonight trying to figure out how you can help me lose everything I've got. I've made you an offer for this place and you've refused. I still want it, and I'm offering again. I've got just one good leg, Stark, and I don't want to break that. So get out. You're a fool, Ware. You're a crook, Stark. You're a crook out here. Good day, Stark. Any orders, sir? Stark, this is Mr. Raleigh, my foreman. Hi. Mr. Raleigh will show you the way out, Stark. You know, I can't understand Ware's attitude toward him. He's peculiar. Has his likes and dislikes. You get along with him, don't you? Get along with anyone when I want to. I hear some pretty good things about you. Molly? Yeah? What thing? Well, they say you understand your business, that you get along with the men. Well, guys got to make a living. That's right. Satisfied? We... What do you mean? Well, there's nothing here for anyone. This place can't last much longer. Men leaving. Well, yes. Can't expect men to stick along without pay. That's right. Especially when there are places that do pay. Making me an offer, Stark? I might. Use a good man. What's the proposition? Interested? 
pipe, do you? Just exactly what do you want, Tony? For what? Getting out of this part of the country. Someone's big enough to put me out. Dorgan at least put up his hand. You wouldn't do that, would you, Stark? I don't get you. Now, well, listen. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving this part of the country. But when I be leaving, and it won't be on a horse. I get you now. There's lots of ways of leaving the country, and I'm going to arrange for you. It's different, perhaps, from your arrival in the boxcar. When you leave, it's the injustice. Can you climb aboard your horse, or shall I boost you? I think I'll be able to make it. Another time, another place. Any time, any place. Get going. Pay off. We give an extra month's pay as bonus here, and one more upon delivery of stock in Kansas City. That's a good idea. I'm in on half that 2800 Any way you want it. Ha-ha, <laughs> you're all right, Sue. Yeah, we're just a couple of big cattle men. Good investment for a couple of nice people. Yeah, we're all right, we are. Ah, oh, I meant the girl and her father. Oh. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't. You're just interested in the guy with a broken leg. That's right. Sure. Nobody ever fooled the Duke of Wellington. I don't know how much longer we're going to hold this bunch of cowboys. They're doing an awful lot of talking. They'll get everything that's coming in three days. Cash on the line. Well, I hope so. Well, I'm guaranteeing it. All right, I'll tell them. Now, I'll tell them tonight myself. All right. You think so? Eh? Sure. They'll never start the cattle out. That bunch of cow hands wants them. Well, they're going to get it. It's on the way. Whose money? The guy that you call the Duke of Wellington. How do you know? Oh, I have my way of finding out things. That money's going to be in the bank and will it the first thing in the morning. That gives me an idea. How good it is. Depends on how far you go. The limit. And we're set. The Duke. <laughs> Say, just who was that Duke of Wellington? That's the bird that's licking the pony. Uh, well, this is the time he loses. Sorry to break in on you, Mr. Ware, but I've got to know where I stand around here. Just because I sent him a message that I wanted to see him. Just a minute. Gone over my head. Countermanded my orders before. Yesterday, made me ridiculous in front of all the men. Why, oh, Anne. He pays no attention to anything I say. Is that part of his job? I think so. You engaged him to run things, didn't you? Yes. And I told him he'd have a free hand, didn't I? Yes. But I'd stand back of it. And he's done a good job of it, hasn't he? It's the high-handed way in which he does things that I object. I think you're wrong, Anne. I don't. I think I should. Anytime you're right, I will. But if I were in his place, I'd be bought for nothing. Yes, I think he does. And won't interfere with you again. That's good enough for me. Thanks. Excuse me. Are you in love with him? Nope. I do. Are you sure? Well, I dislike him. Are you sure of that? Well, there are a lot of things I don't like about him. And I'm not interested in anything he does or think. Oh. I see. I guess I'm not necessarily wrong with you. Oh, yes, you are. Just use your head. You always have, uh, up to now. Miles from there, is it? 
Better than that. Thanks. Hiya, dude. What's the idea of the escort? Oh, thought you might meet up with some naughty men. Step on it, Butch. Wait a minute. Where are we going? Sit down. We don't want any trouble out of you. About six hours ago. Thanks. Come on, all out. Say, hey, what's this all about? You'll find out in a minute. Come on. chance, Dogan. I don't think so. You asked Bush to bring you here. We broke the axle on your car. You asked to keep the money in the safe. Several of the boys heard you. Somebody's been doing a lot of thinking for you, Dogan. Let's have that roll. Give him Raleigh's arm trick. <laughs> Want a receipt? <laughs> Big sheep, man. Nights out here in the West. I think I'll bring my folks out later. Sam, don't you? You begged Butch to keep the money overnight for you. Because you were afraid you might lose it. Isn't that right? That's right. Much obliged, Butch. Oh, don't mention it. You're a smart army. Make yourself comfortable. Butch will take you on his lap and send you a few funny stories, won't you, Butch? Yeah, I'll tell him some bedtime stories. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't know one about two rats, do you? Take care of him. Sit down. So you two toss in $2,800 to pull us out of the hole. Doc and his gang can't get away with this stuff. I appreciate what you've done. You back me up. You know, it looks like they won't pay off in time to start that drive. Why did you cross us, Butch? Oh, Doc, a friend of mine. I get it. You've been working for him right along. Yeah. He pays off. Well, I guess I'll do my outside. Yeah, it'd be better for the rug. Don't you make any sudden break, or I'm liable to have to spunk you. I'm George Wright, Stark's bookie. Yeah? I got no love for him, and I won't stand for this. What'd he do with the money? Dog and put it in the safe. That's great. What can we do? You sit tight. I'll get that money the first minute I can and get word to your ranch. If you do, I'll never forget you for it. Neither will Stark or Jorgen, and I'll get a lot of satisfaction out of that. idea. What's yours? I'm here to win a bet. He claims you're Neil Craig, the rodeo champ, and I bet you wasn't. Neil Craig? That's what Lem says. Win the bet? Now be funny. Oh, so that's the way of it, is it? What do you mean? He's hard to keep track of. What is your name out here? Raleigh. Raleigh. That's a new one. <laughs> Lem says his name is Craig, but his real name is Gibson. Gibson? 
Sure, Lem used to work for his old man. Stark, partner? Yeah. You win. Tell Stark that. Now that everybody knows who everybody else is, I'll get busy. to square this. Now, you men stick with these cattle. I'll send word when to start trouble with Stark. Okay. Where? Yes? I'm from the Stark plant, and I want to talk to your foreman, Mr. I'm not surprised. I'm George Rice, Stark's bookkeeper. Yeah? He and Dorgan are holding Mr. Kendall. Well, why are you here? Because I have no use for them. They held Kendall up to stop your payroll, and here it is. Here, pay the men off. Give them a bonus now. Tell them they'll get another on delivery of that stock in Kansas City. You're great on giving orders. You'll be all right when you learn to obey them. Now, that stock's in Tontine Basin. Send word over to the men right away to start driving them in. And what do you do? I'm going over and pay Mr. Stark a little visit. Drop over, and maybe you'll for it. Here, take this money down to my men at the basin, pay them off, and tell them to start the drive right away. You coming with me? No, I'm going to the Stark ranch. Okay, miss. All right, quick. Outside, keep your eye open. Okay. Hey, did you know that I'm Stark? I could tell that the way you spread it in here. Now, none of your worst facts. Who is this guy that you call for Walter Roy? A pal of mine. I'm asking you who he is. <laughs> I want to be around when you find out. One of our men says he knows. He says. Wouldn't that be funny? Not to me, it wouldn't. Work first. Huh. Hey, first. Mark, work first. You'll never see him.
doing here? Hello, sir. Well, what did you win this time? A chance to tell you what a nice, clean fighter I think your partner Stark is. Where is he? Lying on the floor, taking the count. Well, you evidently sent this just in time. I didn't send any telegram. You signed it, didn't you? I sent it. Oh, signing Stark's name, eh? Not as bad as stealing cattle. Who did that? Why, your man Friday here. What? My man Blair. You and Stark ran off our cattle. I didn't. Your partner did. How about it, Stark? I did no such thing. Just a minute. I'll give you proof where he's been trimming you for plenty. He's a liar. Who? My son? You can't give me that. I think it's a time oh. that you and I had a little talk. No, no, no. If you only give me a chance a minute, I'd spray the whole thing. <laughs> Woo! The old man's wound up again. Gwen, I want you to meet your future sister-in-law, Miss Ware. <laughs> what happened to Bert? Oh. Hello, gang. Where were you when the cyclone hit? Been taking a gang. No, but I could use a little one right now. Oh, 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 oh you want to start something, is it? <laughs>